Gilgalad was an elven king, of him the harper sadly sing, the last whose realm was fair and free between the mountains and the sea. So who the hell is this bloke? Wes Hal, mean friend, and welcome to it, another video. My dear friends, the abhorrent TV show, The Rings of Power, has been out for a long time, and uh, the biggest gripes that people have had with the show, at least as far as the characters are concerned, uh, has been Galadriel, of course. Well, uh, we are talking about the characters that are quote-unquote canonical, meaning the characters that, whose names were taken from text that Tolkien wrote. We are not talking about the Amazon's original characters. Of course, none of the personalities of those characters that appeared in The Rings of Power are doing justice to those original characters that Tolkien wrote. We know that. And uh, because Galadriel is the more famous, the more, more known of all the characters, it is quite obvious that uh, it, it is the biggest problem that people have. However, I need to talk about Gilgalad. I need to talk about a character who in the show was made into a complete and utter asshole. <laughs> in the show, if you've seen the abhorrent The Rings of Power, you know that, uh, yes, he was the king of the elves there, but otherwise, the only thing he did is that he wanted to get rid of Galadriel because of her sacred crusade against Sauron, that he was a greedy bastard whose only goal in his life was to get rich and to rip off dwarves of the of their mithril that they just found. And uh, that uh, he was afraid of everybody. He was afraid of everything. Um, he was a stuttering nitwit who resembled, and now you can laugh, because it is really who he reminded me of, who uh, reminded me of uh, the posh vampires from the Twilight Saga. Yes, I have seen the Twilight Saga. Don't ask me any more questions about that. <laughs> but yeah, instead of who he really was, he reminded me of a, a strange goth emo, not goth, but emo um, vampire from a chick flick that was based on a chick book. But who was he, really? Who was he? Gil Galat. Eranion Gil Galat, who was a, uh, the, the high king, the last high king of the Noldor, of the Noldor elves in Middle Earth. A praised king, the high king of the elves of the West, of Linden, of the elves in Eriador, who really was the boss in Middle Earth right before the war of the last alliance, both between Noldor and the Sindar the, you know, the Sindarin elves, a man who uh, was a friend of the faithful from Numenor, a man who formed the alliance with Elendil, Isildur and Anarion, and then fought in the war of the last alliance, a man who was a friend to Elrond, a man who received the two elven rings of power from Celebrimbor, and then passed them on to Elrond and Círdan. And then, of course, uh, Círdan's uh, ring went on to Gandalf. And so that this high king of the Noldor, he influenced the events of Arda, of Middle-earth, for centuries and millennia to come. At the beginning of the Second Age, which the Rings of Power is, or should be taking place in, he indeed established the realm uh, of Linden. And then he did have strong uh, bonds with the men of Numenor and with the dwarves. And he, it, it was him who received the seeds of the Malorn tree, from the kings of Numenor. And then, and then, of course, he gave them to Galadriel so, so that she can plant them in uh, Lorien. And so it was him, thanks to whom Lorien is, who he is. Now, I am not giving him too much of a credit 
but he doesn't really get much credit from people or fans of Tolkien as one of the most influential, one of the most powerful and respected kings of the elves. And people are saying and uh, very often mentioning that Galadriel was the one who saw through Anatar when he went amongst the elves in the Second Age. And it was, in fact, Sauron. Yeah, but it, he also, Anatar also came to Linden and he uh, approached Gilgalad and Elrond. Well, uh, but, but Gilgalad saw through him and he thought and he knew that, oh, there's something off. There's, there's, there's something all right with this, with this feather. And he didn't trust Anatar. So he gave word to the other elves in the region. That, hey, listen, people, don't, don't, don't trust this bloke. He's strange. I don't really trust him. And of course, it was proved right and correct. And then he was one of the most important personalities when Sauron invaded Eriador at the, the War of the Elves and Sauron. And then, unfortunately, he, he destroyed Eregion. But then Gilgalat, once again, he uh, was aided by the, by the, by the Numenorians. And they chased away Sauron. And so that later, when Sauron was apprehended by the Numenorians and he went to Numenor, and there you can already already see the time compression in the Rings of Power, right? So first I mentioned that Anatar appeared and only later, a long time after this, thousands of years later, he was apprehended by the Numenorians and he went to Numenor. So he was in disguise, in the, in the show, he was in disguise of Halbrand instead of being Anatar and at the same time he was in Numenor. So you already you've got a compression of about a thousand years there. So when he was apprehended, Sauron, by the Numenorians, Gilgalad had a free hand. He didn't have anybody, you know, to fight against, to guard his realm uh, before. So he expanded and he thrived and he became even more powerful. So much that when Sauron came back from Numenor, he went like, oh shit, oh shit, Gilgalad's too powerful. <laughs> and so that in the end, in the end, when uh, the elves and men and dwarves, when they allied, and when uh, the two kings, the Gil Gilgalad and the Lendil, when they met at Amonsul, and then when they marched on Gondor, sorry, on Mordor, it was him, the elven king and Elendil, who were the leaders of the in in, in of the entire thing. They organize it all. It was thanks to them that Sauron was defeated. Well, of course, Isildur chopped off his fingers with the Ring of Power. But you know what I mean. Uh, man, Aegloss, the icicle spear, it was named icicle, it was actually made of metal. But it was, it was a legendary weapon. Everybody was afraid of Aegloss, the spear of Gilgalad. And so that that's why I, th I, I think and I say, man, we should talk more about Gilgalad. He was really one of the most powerful elven kings who ever lived in Middle-earth and definitely one of my most favorite characters. And to, to finish up this video, I would like to uh, recite a poem written by Professor Tolkien about Gilgalad so that we can honor the true and proper uh, high king of the Noldor. And uh, so yeah, so that will be all. Thank you for listening. Enjoy listening of the poem. And uh, until next time. Gilgalad was an elven king. Of him the harpers sadly sing. The last whose realm was fair and free between the mountains and the sea. His sword was long, his lance was keen, his shining helm afar was seen. The countless stars of heaven's field were mirrored in his silver shield. But long ago he rode away, and where he dwelleth none can say. For into darkness fell his star, in Mordor, where the shadows are. <laughs>